Hello and welcome. This is your GM in the Great Barrier broadcasting from the center of your entertainment galaxy. We are back with Star Trek Adventures Aegis, and we are in part two of our season one finale, Cold Warriors Part Two. So, before we get started with this session, I just had a couple of uh, small announcements. Uh, first and foremost, I should have mentioned this last time, but I think it's worth mentioning that uh, since this is our season finale, um, after we finish, I would like to arrange a Q&A stream for any of you that have questions about the campaign, about the channel, that want to talk Trek in general, it will be in the place of our usual Saturday broadcast. Uh, the exact date we don't have worked out, in part because we are obviously still in this adventure. Uh, but also, even once we get past that, I want to make sure that I schedule a time where we have all of our players present. Because uh, I'm sure that they have plenty of thoughts and uh, ideas that want to contribute itself. The last time, I think, uh, it's, it's been a long time since we did our last Q&A. We did a mid-season one, and nice to do with the people that we had but i'd love to bring in the whole cast for something like that so uh for those of you watching here in the archive or for those of you that are following live on twitch you can drop questions um, for the archive just leave some in the comments here you can also all join our discord where you are welcome to drop questions there as well uh Heck, you can even fire something to me on different socials, depending on what's available. At present, I'm over on Mastodon on Blue Sky right now. Uh, we'll see about more in the future. Otherwise, just as a bit of housekeeping, um, last time, some of the players, or rather, some of our audience had redeemed Quatlus in order to affect the outcome of the game. That's our local channel point, as uh, Mr. Creighton was alluding to. I see on the list we still have um, one increase in difficulty spend and two decrease in difficulty spends. So the way that this will work is that uh, those next notes will uh, essentially come out of... Uh, they will play out in sequence. So these next few rolls, uh, the first one will increase in difficulty, the other two will decrease just so we are all on the same page. All right. And Didn't we have something previously as well? From last session? Yeah, that's what I was saying. There were a couple yeah. right, A couple of those were from last session. Uh, we had one oh, okay. just today, which has come up from uh, the Overland Gamer. So that's where we are right now. Uh, with all that, I think that, yeah, we're just set to get going. So um, a brief recap here. When last we left off, um, we're in about November of uh, 2154, and the Aegis was on course to support a mission of peace. Specifically, your initial orders had sent you into a region of space where uh, the Enterprise would be rendezvousing with some Tellarite uh, ships in order to pick up their ambassador. Their goal? To escort the Tellarites and... Uh, have the NX-01 arrive at a neutral planet for negotiations between the Vulcans and Andorians, a place called Babel. Uh, it was hoped that with Earth being directly involved and with Tellarite backing that you might be able to solidify the ceasefire that has taken place and even enter a proper peace between the two uh, warring powers. Aegis was actually given a special supplemental mission um, where a courier that was just straining to get out fast enough uh, rendezvoused with you in order to drop off a diplomatic officer, um, a man by the name of Marcus Horn, played by our own Felix, and uh, your mission changed to allow you to rendezvous with the NX-01. Unfortunately, when you tried to make the rendezvous site, you found that Enterprise was running very behind. As a matter of fact, they seem to still be waiting at the rendezvous coordinates for the main Tellarite uh, escort. Uh, after some communication between the two of you, 
he realized that they had not shown up on Sensors anywhere, and uh, at least as far as Enterprise was concerned, and they were actively starting to look further and further for them. Uh, coordinating with other Starfleet ships that are spread out along the area, you manage to locate signs of debris, and the Aegis was first on scene to determine that you had in fact found a series of, uh, you had in fact found the remnants of Tellarite uh, ships. Most of it was too badly scattered to um, at least identify visually, but for our purposes we'll say that there is at least uh, one ship that is mostly together. You have detected survivors among the crowd, uh, or rather amongst the wreckage and you otherwise have been trying to assess what could have possibly done this um, unfortunately your analysis points to a very disturbing possibility specifically that between the debris composition and between the radiological signatures everything suggests that a battle of some sort took place, and that small Earth Scout vessel you had seen some months back, uh, the Starship Crozier, had fired a, a large array of nuclear weapons upon the ships, and I suppose somehow managed to catch them off guard, um, whether it destroyed itself or was blown up in a return of fire, you're not entirely certain, although it does not look like there was a significant opportunity for them to respond. So uh, that has left you with the disturbing possibility of uh, someone using an Earth ship to launch an attack against the Tellarites. And so it is with that and with the visual out ahead of you that we pick back up from the last session. Uh, as far as I remember, all officers that were present um, in last session are on the bridge right now, and yep. we've all gone over the information we just talked about. So, um, if I recall as well, uh, Drone, you were saying Patel was uh, quite uh, urgent about wanting to rescue the Tellarites, if uh, memory serves. Yeah, I think that's just something that he wanted to, like, or that, that I as a player would have, like, prioritized doing between the sessions, unless we're picking up directly where we left off. Well, we can go um, ahead and we can go ahead and skip on to uh, going down to sickbay where, um, or, like, we have space shots of the Aegis hovering outside of uh, the debris field, and we can just cut down to sickbay where there's a lot of activity already, if that'd be uh, to everybody's preference. I, I will ask first, did you guys want any further scenes on the bridge, or did you want to go ahead and try to rescue who you could find? Uh, certainly try and rescue survivors. Um, I want Romanov and Shira to salvage some of the debris from the Starfleet vessel and some of the Tellerite uh, pieces and try to break down how exactly... Um, any evidence or anything they can get further about uh, what's going on in the situation. Well, or... I'm also going to run with the possible theory <clears throat> that this was faked. That keep, this was, you know... Certainly a possibility, but keep, you know, every avenue open. Um, just, Always. just work together on if, you know, one, if it is fake, two, if it isn't fake, how exactly would the Crozier... Just do a bit of forensic, forensic science going on with the situation. Um, yeah. What you know? What what if it is a crozier piece of the crozier? Was it because of the uh, battle that happened now, or was it destroyed elsewhere? Um, hmm. If it was, if uh, what? How did the battle play out? Possibly. Well, um, let's I, stuff like that. Yeah, I think we have a we have a good sense of uh, what we want to with all of that so um yeah let us say that that is being collected uh, shuttle pods and worker bees are scouting out amongst the area um, if there's anything safe to just transport on board 
then um, that is also being uh, that is being beamed on. Um, but then otherwise, let's go ahead and move on down to uh, put it in the. Let's go ahead and bring things down to the sick bay just to get things set up there. Um, so a number of uh, a small handful of survivors is presently being brought on board. Um, I guess so the question is for anyone in the bridge staff whom would want to be involved in a scene there if any um I'd like uh Patel myself the doctor obviously and uh if he feels so willing um our current diplomat horn okay sure I will say um, that um with uh, particularly with this player absent that Dr. Lambeth is otherwise engaged at the moment or rather uh, sure. it'll become I've, it it will become apparent as to why but um I forgot Ben wasn't here um, could have Nurse Marple come in. Yep. I, You're forgetting you know, a lot yes. of the officers recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Enter the sick bay, Captain, uh, Commander Patel, and of course uh, Commander Horn. It is a flurry of activity. Um, the wounded have been brought on board, and um, I'm going to say that. Uh, oop, not the bridge. That's not where we want to send people. Uh, we are going to sick bay. So when you arrive on the scene, um, it is a busy. Uh, it is just a veritable hive of activity, as uh, medical staff are trying to help very desperately injured Tellarites uh, to beds in different places. It, all the Tellarites definitely seem much worse for wear. Most seem to, like, have considerable, like, burns or scoring on their uh, uniforms. Uh, some appear to be in heavier garb, like something that looks like partial environmental suits or at least oxygen masks. Um, at least one of whom, like, has seems to have it partially seared into his flesh and is having it, like, steadily removed and the skin regenerated around it um, it is a good thing that there was ample uh, like pain medication on hand because this just seems like a very difficult circumstance for all of them um, you don't see the doctor in here however uh, I am going to say that there is a secondary door to a smaller surgical bay so as to Basically something to allow for um, especially sensitive operations to take place. Um, and I'm going to say that the basically do not disturb sign is over in that area. Um, Nurse Marple, you uh, see the command staff on scene as you are helping uh, one of the Tellarites administering a bit of medicine here out of character is somebody dying in the background yeah good gesundheit yeah woof. in my background somebody some, some did sound like they were gagging or trying to bring up a hairball or something oh dear oh dear i don't know, I don't know where that was coming from oh. uh, anyway yes uh, uh i'm muted it's not me well, whomever is, whomever might be dying, don't, really don't. Yeah. Uh, Marple, I guess, would like to triage the uh, patients. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me an insight plus medicine roll. Uh, for this roll, uh, the difficulty is increased, so I'm going to say it is up to a difficulty of three. You may mm -hmm. have assistance from the ships. Uh, I'm going to say sensors and medicine, however. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, she'll make that scan. Find it. 
cheat that. Okay. Uh, insight and medicine, you say? Correct. Uh, da -da -da. I've got patient care as a focus. That would definitely apply. Okay. Focus. And I'd like to buy a extra dice with some momentum, please. Certainly. Okay. And cool. if you'd care to drop that. Okay, and that is three successes, but that is also a complication. So, uh, the question would be then, Craig, do you wish to uh, accept the complication and uh, experience a narrative issue? Would you prefer to uh, ignore that and provide the GM with some threat? Or would you prefer to uh, buy that off with the remaining two momentum that you would have? Let's have some fun and make it narrative. All right. Uh, shouldn't the ship also have rolled? It should. Would somebody be able to take care of the ship? I'll take care of it. Okay. Okay. Well, with one success, uh, that will give you a. That will give you back the point of momentum, so there's actually no need to uh, mess with the momentum scale there, uh, Panda. All right. Um, but yeah, um, I think that I'm going to rule as uh, part of the complication. So I think that a good number of the Tellarites, while you can make them comfortable you don't actually know that you are going to be able to save these people as uh, the radiation was so extensive that um, or between radiation between uh, some exposure to decompression like uh, like resulting in issues from decompression and um, you know that they were here f uh, apparently they were here for several hours this way at the very least, um, it's suggesting that the um, these people are less likely to make it. The one who, most of them are in fact no longer able to even like relay much information between sedation and whatnot. The, the one token in blue whom uh, gave you the information I just sent to you via the Roll20 chat... Um, Oh, yes. That, yeah, that would be the the one person whom you might be able to get a couple questions out of. Oh, uh, Captain. Nurse. Uh, uh Doctor Lambeth's taken one of the older uh, Tellarites into uh, surgery. Um, uh, the rest aren't in very good condition at all between decompression and the uh, radiation. Uh, it's frankly a miracle that we've got this many alive, and I'm not sure how much longer that will remain the case. She nods. Do the best uh, you can. Yes. Uh, she'll uh, she'll go back to uh, back to work. Um. There's are any of them conscious right now? And of sound mind, sound enough mind. Uh, this one, uh, over here, um, uh, might be able to answer some questions. The, uh, other two are, uh, uh, very sick and... She nods. Yeah. Thank you, nurse. Uh, and I'll move my way over. Okay. Actually, one quick token check there. Felix, are you able to move Marcus... Yes, I am. <clears throat> okay, good. I did not know whether the uh, whether the tokens were working properly on that. I'm going to move uh, Marple. I will also say, uh, Craig, since this is an activation for Nurse Marple, you may provide her... Uh, you can build out the character a little bit further. I believe that she can still except a talent or value and possibly still a focus. I'll look into that. Yes. Uh, but yes, you arrive 
at the side of the bio bed and uh, the laying de- uh, laying out there um, arms and legs somewhat uh, burnt or like the fabric uh, being like very clearly exposed to some sort of flame or possibly plasma vented um, and trembling just a little bit in spite of the pain men's is uh, a tellerite with uh, very short kept hair not simply uh, like how he wears his main hairstyle but facial hair as well has uh, like he has no beard to speak of over his chin um, and it uh, essentially wraps around his face uh, going along the bottom of it and then looping up to give him a mustache um, in spite of the injuries he has uh, at the very least that does not seem to have sustained damage but he's otherwise uh, he is otherwise just struggling to kind of keep his eyes open and is there a rank on him or anything like that uh, from what you see and what limited information all of you would have this looks to be roughly a a lieutenant rank in the Tellerite Space Command Well, that was terrifying. Out of character, uh, there's lightning strike literally right here. Ooh, shit. Yes, I heard the rumble. Okay. Um, she'll just approach and say, um, I am Captain Lillian Sharp of the Earthship Aegis. We came to rescue you as soon as we could. Lieutenant, if you could perhaps tell me what happened. Earthship. We didn't do this. You say that, but it was one of your ships that did this to us. And we were... We were answering a distress call. Originally only planned to peel off one of the ships... The ambassador insists. Uh, uh, where is Grawl? Is he? I, I told them to save him. Please tell me he is all right. Easy. Easy, Lieutenant. We're doing whatever we can. Please, continue. We didn't do this, and we're trying to figure out who's trying to set us up. Mm. Any details you can give us? Any minute or insignificant? Anything you can think of of the situation? The lieutenant kind of... He doesn't entirely focus on you, Captain, as there's like considerable stress on his face, particularly at the mention of the ambassador. Um, He tries to recollect himself and uh, try to think as close as he can. We received a distress call uh, from one of your Earth ships. We recognized the communication signal. Uh, We dropped out of warp to provide assistance. My ship, the Gobrock, was going to be left behind in order to provide further assistance, but the ambassador insisted we all stop to tender aid. Goodwill just... (coughs) We couldn't get a positive readout on bio signs, and they were just perpetually reducing speed. We couldn't determine the problem, so I was preparing to take a team on board. Engineers, doctors, all the like. Now, the ambassador was even overseeing us. He wasn't on this flagship. Ugh. It was by chance he was on board when the nukes hit. 
ship was badly damaged. The, the, your ship it fired its weapons and then made a run directly on the flagship. It loosened antimatter containment. They were both gone. Barely made it to an unvented compartment before. <coughs> Oh, and as he uh, struggles with this, yeah, uh, yeah, the the bio bed is going to start uh, giving blinks for like life support, or rather, uh, uh, life will signs. come over. Yep, you are going to get at best at this point. Um, you will get a question out of him. If you spend momentum, you can ask him a little more. Um, before he is, like, unable to answer. Um, out of character. Any, what do you guys suggest the question should be? I mean, you mentioned that the ambassador wasn't on his ship. Or was he on one of the other ones, I assume? Or he was... I feel like there's something there. Right. What he was saying is that he was, uh, like... What he's actually pointing out is that by a stroke of fortune, uh, Ambassador Grawl, who should have been dead when uh, the Crozier apparently rammed the Tellarite flagship and basically uh, you know, blew its antimatter supply, uh, which it from the last time you saw it, the Crozier had none of that left, so that's like, right. two bits of information there. Uh, but uh, the Admiral was, or rather the uh, Ambassador Grawl was not actually on board his flagship when that happened. He was on uh, the ship of this Tellarite lieutenant. So, the... She just looks over in the direction of the freaking surgery room. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask another question. Maybe, was there anything unusual about the Starfleet ship? Yeah, I was, I was gonna ask like, um, possibly. I'm not asking it yet, GM. I'm ask. <laughs> I'm suggesting it to to my players. Perhaps asking, was there any odd signals or um, odd readings that he could remember detailing uh, that he found concerning or strange regarding the readings? Or what the exact um, emergency signal was? Yeah. Or, or did they receive, like, detect human life signs at all? Because it would be very strange if it was just like an empty ship or a ship with non human life signs on board. They said they were having difficulty uh, yeah. getting yeah, read they, on the life signs. They had difficulty reading life signs. Um, and it was decelerating without actually stopping. Uh, yeah. All right. In um, Ricardo Montalban's voice, imagine. Slow to one half impulse power. Oh, yeah. Oof. Lieutenant, I know it's difficult. I know you're about to pass out, but was there any anything odd regarding the readings that you were making before you got close enough? Uh, energy signatures, power plant, engines not not lining up right. Inconsistencies. Oh, uh, the the lieutenant's uh, face strains as uh, and he, his fists clench as he just tries to keep himself going. Here it was unusual delay. All all attempts at communication. Sparsely answered and mostly came through text reply. At least a 90 second delay on transmission. Uh, we couldn't detect any problem with their communication systems. Uh, some sort of high energy field disrupting life sign scans couldn't find 
life aboard from the sensors. We just want to help. And he's starting I'm to sorry. like go pale and like lean further back in the seat. Pass us out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. She just lets him go. Wanting to like comfort him, but you don't touch radiation exposed people, so she just like there's just like a frustrated hand that just puts it back to her side. <sighs> See to it that he's has the most care. Nurse. Uh, yes. I'll try. Um, I turn to the captain as soon as as she's done with like the, the speaking with yeah. the nurse, and go like, well, they're not showing their faces indicates they're not humans, and the delay in communications would indicate need to translate to formulate an answer. Mm. I have I've actually a. I have a sinking feeling I know who it is, she says. Oh? We need to get in contact with the Enterprise. And I would like to communicate with the Enterprise. <laughs> we can transition. Yeah. <laughs> Next no, the, scene calling out. <laughs> yeah. This would just be the, uh, it'd be the moment where... Um, scene, uh, scene wipe, yep. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, mildly suspenseful music is uh, in place. Just the, <laughs> we need the, to call the, Enterprise. Camera zooms in. Yep. The dramatic pre-commercial break uh, music swell. Yes, yes. You already know my suspicion, so if you want Archer to, to, to say the, uh, say what my suspe- obvious suspicion is, um, in the oh. classic, you know, scene white fashion. Well. Uh, let me, hold on. Sorry, just let me move the tokens around here once again. Uh, just having plot select... twist. It's Cardassians. <laughs> um, Ferengi? What? Wait. What Dominion? Pre- <laughs> what precisely, Captain, is a pack led? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um, North. It's it's just North. It, it, and... it, it is North. God damn, no. I'm, I'm not. I, I shouldn't have bought that ship. Uh, <laughs> I was a bit too fast with the docking. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I just wanted a place to put my collection of vintage nuclear weapons, and and uh, I fired everything. Not my proudest moment, but live and learn. He just shrugs uh, as uh, the, just shrugs as the uh, like wreckage of Tellarite ships burn in the background. Oh, who, who can stay mad at Narth? Uh, you know, everyone. Uh, I, I get. <laughs> I guess there was some hard feelings after immersion, uh, which I think was episode ten, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Wasn't too long ago. No, not not so long ago. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So, um, I suppose first I should ask um, Romanov, Shira, do you want to seem to do any work with the uh, residual bits, or would you? Like the uh, the first big, uh, would you like the next big legacy cameo of this uh, of the adventure? Um. Well, there, there's just certain things I want to give you on how I'm gonna suggest to Shula that we do this. But that can wait till later. It's up to you. All right. Well, then, let's let's just cut on ahead then to a a few minutes ahead of time. Um, Captain, would you be taking this on the bridge, or would this be in your ready room? Um, this would be 
This would be my ready room. Okay. Do you have Horn and uh, Patel still present for this? Yep. Yep. All right. So, let me just set this up here. Um, so, we then cut over to the... Well, wait. Actually, actually, no, let's put it on the bridge. Bridge to bridge. Okay. Um... Then we cut over to the Bridge of the Aegis, uh, where, as we come back from the dramatic commercial moment, um, Captain, you are face-to-face -face with the uh, commanding officer of the first of Earth's NX-class starships, um, and a man who, at this point, has already saved the uh, managed to save the planet once, um, in this case, from the Zindi. Uh, it is a crew still very much in its early days of adventuring, at least so they hope, but otherwise, like, already racking up quite the record as far as uh, uh, discoveries that they've made, heroic deeds done, and at this point, uh, well, from the view screen, any of that sort of grandiose reputation... It maybe doesn't quite come through as he's just giving you a furrowed brow and trying to figure this out and uh, yes this this would in fact be the first archer cameo this season yeah uh, and let's see give us your best archer impression I'm, <laughs> I'm trying come to on give us the best be best Scott Bacula let's go trying to work that up I, I make no guarantees <laughs> This is where he, he plops the surprise that Scott Beckley actually joins the Discord call. <laughs> oh, if only I had the money for the cameo. But also, that probably wouldn't be terribly uh, strike compliant. So, I'm... Alright, so, as we come back to the we come back to the scene with Archer on the view screen, this says, uh, Captain... I'm not entirely sure I follow here. I... Who are these Romulans, you said? She just pauses for a beat because she's pretty sure they know about them before. Um, you get a headache. Yeah. Unless he's a Romulan. She'll just say... <clears throat> They were a bit of a ghost when I uh, worked amongst the Makos, a empire and the distant uh, anti-spinward of the of the Alpha <sighs> Quadrant, empirical uh, expansionists, very much geared towards uh, trying to sow chaos so they can better conquest the smaller powers. And if anything, it seems like right up their alley, from all the rumors I've heard, overall. Well, it doesn't make I sense for any other powers powers we've run across so far. It Klingons would be too would be much more direct and certainly won't leave any survivors. The Kazinti would it would be a lot more radiation and certainly wouldn't attack a, a no a what was the the out of character? What was the term for captain for them? Vesh, right? Uh, Vesh was actually a proper name. Uh, captain would be the uh, like captain would be the appropriate rank for. All right. Yeah, ranks. a nomad captain wouldn't attack such a large of a prey, and if it was any sort of size like that, there'd be a lot more nuclear signatures and a lot more primitive of one. Tandarns wouldn't do it. There's far too many uh, negatives than there are uh, negative results than there are positive ones. The only ones I can think of at the moment, given everything else that's going on, are these Romulans. Hmm. Sir. Archer rises from his chair, the camera following him as he moves around, uh, pacing about that internal sort of it's not really a dais, uh, as the, like, the segment that the 
that central segment is a bit more recessed lower into the uh, deck plating, uh, as the case is on your bridge, Captain. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what the Makos have encountered out there, and exactly what, or what other signs we have, but we're going to need something more conclusive than that. All we've got right now is, uh, is one of our own apparent ships hauled out uh, at a range that it shouldn't be able to make on its own. Not in the state that you supposedly say it was left. Uh, uh, just to make sure I understand you correctly, that ship was rendered completely warp inert from the last time you saw it? It had no antimatter whatsoever, nor had the capability, defense the capabilities to take on a entire wing of, or entire squadron of, uh, Calorites, much less a Tellarite battle cruise, uh, battle cruise group. Well then, the question remains at this point, Captain, is how, uh, how the hell that thing got out here as fast as it did. So it certainly couldn't have managed that alone. Certainly, and uh, my team is already working on it, though I could use the help with that, sir. What did you have in mind? Certainly we're doing what we can. We have a sensor suite as it is. But if you can uh, perhaps keep our own communications as closely tied as possible with the rest of the local ships, ensuring that there is no delay, um, I want to sequester a no-fly zone at the current moment in any of the territory right now that we are currently occupied more not just simply to Vulcans, uh, Vulcans and Andorians, but uh, any at all, given the fact of the uh, lack of verification and the possibility of somebody able to pose such a uh, concerning deception, even for our own ships. Hmm. I would like, if you can, to bring any of your uh, science teams that you have onto this ship, or perhaps my own team to yours, to get a bit uh, more... Uh, expertise to study the uh, crime scene, as it as it were, and just we have to hold up, hold up, batten batten down, and nail down all we can to make sure that nothing slips through us and we don't have suddenly ships missing again at the current moment. Somebody's trying to cause a bit of a scene, and Captain, if you can, given your. Uh, your close relationship, close relations, as it were, with the uh, Tellrites, if you can try to help calm a few feathers, given the chaos that the, that the whoever is trying to cause, uh, given the situation. Archer takes a moment to think. Um, there's a voice off to the side. Um... A very sort of uh, clipped and muted tone, something slightly feminine coming off from uh, to what would be Archer's uh, left, uh, to the right of the screen, um, as he looks over. Mm. Captain, you're not wrong about the idea of consolidating our resources. However, I worry if we do, uh, my first officer does raise a point, if we do... Uh, all converge on the same location, then either we might render ourselves vulnerable to some sort uh, to a similar sort of ambush, or more likely, we don't have as much of a dragnet cast out when we're trying to find signs of who have uh, the responsible party. Now, if you're saying that this vessel made it out here this far, and it's pretty safe to say, as uh, given its lack of capability, that it couldn't have done so without help. It might make sense to see who exactly is operating in this area. I can, I can say for certain that uh, based on the agreement that we secured with other parties or notice that we placed out, we advise ships to at least maintain a three light year cordon along our route. However, there might be, if anybody is able to operate in this close, then there's a 
reasonable chance, I'd think, that they might be able to, uh, well, there might be some sign of them. You make a good point, Captain, she says. Um, I don't know exactly what these Romulans would use as their, uh, like, standard operating procedure, but... I think it's best that we try to eliminate all possibilities on this. There might be something, an uh, alternative suggestion I may, may make, sir. Especially given the nature of what they're trying to disturb in addition to what we're trying to endeavor in the first place. What's that? We certainly don't have the ships even for trying to cordon off this this amount of space, are we're going to have a whole bunch of holes within our own net. Perhaps, given the fact that you have been quite the diplomat uh, in this quadrant, you might ask a few other powers if they can provide their own and keep them as equally informed and uh, tight among communications and security, perhaps to fill in such gaps. I think a common enemy or a common concern might broker a, a bit more peace than anything else. Especially with all the minor powers antsy as they are. You're not wrong there, Captain. I'll see uh, what favors I can call in. In the meantime, we should uh, relay to the other ships that we do still have out here, try to conduct as in-depth a sensor scan as possible, see if we can work out who might be present in the area. I we should also, um, Horn would just like chime in. We should also work off the assumption that they know who is in the area and what capabilities we have. Agreed. She nods, like, side eyes, uh, horn, but not like a, uh, not in disfavor, but just like surprise in this nods, looking back over, back over to Archer. Agreed. I also would recommend that we rotate, um, our communications and security protocols as often as we can and as reg irregularly as we can to dissuade any, uh, sort of counterintelligence. Good thinking. All right. Well, well, I'll have my science officer coordinate with you right away, and we will see what we can find out here. Good hunting, uh, Captain. Sir, if you can also bring your a, a expert when it comes to um, security, I think that given the fact you've been out here a long longer than I have, perhaps there might be more uh, opportunity for my head of security and yours to figure out what exactly happened. I'll have my armory officer be ready to coordinate with you on this matter, Captain. First, let's Thank you, sir. Can, see if we can find some sign of uh, whatever bastards are responsible for what's going on out here. Enterprise out. She just smiles and nods. Look over to crying with a nod of cutting, cutting the thing, and then she just leans forward and just holds her head. As I'm sure the hurt, the headache hurts a lot. Yes, yes, yes. It's one of the definitely one of those days, Captain. <sighs> Who's here? Hey. Enterprise is relaying uh, parameters for a more expensive sensor scan uh, that we can run here in order to uh, uh, try to discern anything that might be on the path or something of the sort here. I'll, I'll start relaying the parameters to the other vessels. Uh, let's see. Uh, Crichton goes through his... Uh, She'll Person. just nod with a groan. <sighs> Crichton, start start uh, random random security protocols when it comes to communications. Be creative as as possible and as unorthodox as you po as possibly can. Hey, Communicate hey, with sir. Enterprise with uh, finding new possibilities with that. I will also relay uh, 
the the adjustments to uh, the Intrepid and the Nile. Um, the Niagara should also still just be in range right now. Um, Make sure that you have voice uh, voice communication. I'm sure you've already know a few of the personalities, various other uh, communication officers. Do your own personal quiz quizzes if need be to double check before give them anything. Yeah. Hey, I don't sir. want any slip ups. <sighs> Shira, Horn, Romanov, I'd like the three of you to work with the armory officer from the Enterprise. Continue with the work you can, figure out anything you can regarding that. Um, yes, Patel, if you can work with a science officer. <sighs> oh, she just covers her face again. I'm. There's nothing else. I'm gonna be in my ready room. All right. So. Um. I feel like, as as the captain like stands up to leave, like almost like, well, there's one thing, captain. Yes. What are Romulans? <sighs> I guess a brief overview won't be too bad. I don't happy know with much. The file. <laughs> huh? I'd be happy with the file if you need some. Not much of a file, but at a rumor. She says, I'll see if we have anything from the Mako. Uh, actually written down amongst the Makos. <sighs> Patel. <clears throat> Actually, Crichton, if Archer needs some help regarding the um, Tellrites, uh, inform him that we have some connections with a certain admiral amongst the uh, Tellrite forces. We might as well use that card if need be. Oh, yes. Uh, I still have the communication frequency specific for uh, Admiral Dega in order to uh, keep, well... If he's near enough to hear us, then, yeah, we, we do have that option, sir. Offer the suggestion to the captain, uh, but in the meantime, if there's nothing else, she says, looking, like, kind of mildly squinting to everybody, just because just it hurts, I'm going to be in my ready room. All right. So, uh, as the captain steps off the bridge, um, let's kind of go around in order. First, um... Drone, um, with the captain off, you are technically the senior most officer, or you are the one in the command chain to uh, next in the command chain there. So, how would you want to run things from here? Um, I mean, I don't, I, I sort of understood that the scene is basically over at that point, right? There There's are... nothing specific that I would be doing here on the bridge really i mean you yeah but you could like look up try to find a black box try to work science stuff you have science you have whoever else is on the other enterprise given all the crazy shit's going on now uh yeah there would also be of course um, there is a sensor scan you can conduct at some point to uh, in combination with the other uh, with other ships in the squadron that's out here um, though that doesn't have to be a right away thing. Just, if nothing else, if there's anything that you'd want to do to flavor uh, things up. Yeah, I mean, specifically if I'm working together with, with the Science Department Enterprise, like a little bit more concretely now, I would probably just, I, and I don't see a need to make a scene out of it, but I would probably just uh, be doing things like looking for the black box, or like utilizing the fact that we have two pairs of sensors now instead of just one. On oh, I should... Just, I should clarify, Enterprise is still at some distance away from you. They've not uh, right. joined you guys yet. Um, How far out are they? Uh, I'd say they're still at least a couple of light years away from your position. Because they uh, are the still very near the rendezvous. Um, they had been continuing their scans for the Tellarites, and you've just updated them on the rescue mission that you've undertaken. So yeah. they only you, now know that they're going to... Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. 
No, sorry, I interrupted. That's my apology. Okay. Uh, well, so the way that the situation is currently playing out, now that you've found that the Tellarites have actually come under attack and that they won't be... Um, mm. Now that they won't be making that rendezvous, unfortunately, um, Enterprise and the rest of the ships that were out there supposedly to patrol that route uh, to begin with to keep it safe from the Tellarites... Uh, Archer's thinking is that since the uh, the Crozier, even in its best days, is a very short-ranged craft, or it's not going to get somewhere this far out as fast as it could have, or it wasn't going to go from where it was to here. Uh, it, it's a long road getting from there to here. So, how do you? Yep, we've truly gone too far. <laughs> I'm, I'm also, going to quit this campaign from the amount of times we use this joke. Can, can you... I, you broke up there. Can you repeat that for me? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, at some point, I'll just put that on the soundboard and that'll be the thing. Um, it's it's not just dead. It is a pulp. Just, it is, there's nothing... There's no, like... There's no horse left. You just, you just need to play, like, the first three notes of the song and just panda starts dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what you, know what you could do is put a moopsie sound at the beginning and the end of the song. That would be epic. Mm. Moopsie. There it is. Oh no. <laughs> no. We're, we're we're not tapping the moopsie right now. I like I my think, bones. Thank you. I think one thing Patel would do, and it's not a role or anything, but just like narratively. Especially if it's like a closing out the scene moment or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. Since it was mentioned in the Discord, I think he would definitely, once he sits into the captain's chair, he would like pull out a pad or something and mutter something to himself along the lines of, what are Romulans? And, and like look up that word mm -hmm. uh, in the library computer. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, be, yeah, beyond that little... Uh, academic exercise for Patel, let's say. Um, just to uh, just to go back and make sure that I had the uh, like I had the scene cleared up for everybody. Um, because the Crozier, short range, slow ship, uh, would take a long time to get out here. Archer figures that even if they were in their prime condition, they couldn't have made it out here without a lot of help. That is to say, something that can carry that ship a good bit faster than uh, what something else could like basically is uh, you're going to send out a tug to pick that ship up anyway and bring it back to yeah Earth. so somebody Earth. probably tugged it here so yep. if you can look if you can so, look up if you have warp signatures or anything else impulse yeah. Yeah. trails yeah so the the thinking there is that uh, archer wants to look for signs of whether anybody has been around here recently enough, or if anybody is kind of secretly closer to the zone, uh, this zone of uh, uh, the the cordon that you've set up for the route. Um, this kind of neutral zone we're in. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you started this, and I did. Anyway, I did. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, but yeah, we can worry about that in a moment or getting results from that here soon. Um, in the meantime, let's go on down the list. Um, first, since we haven't heard from either of you two, um, Brian, Craig, is there anything that you would like to do with either Romanov or Shira? Yeah. Scene-wise? Yes, that'd be... Um... Andorians first. Oh, thank you. Uh, so I think let's see we, we kind of now know what happened because the Tellarites told us um let's perhaps start going through the debris see if there was see if there's something that our initial scans have missed okay uh, seeing just how many nuclear missiles perhaps were fired, that kind of, that kind of thing. Okay, let's. I'll tell you what then. 
let's go down into, um, let's say, a cargo bay. I'm going to move some tokens around here. Thankfully, it looks like uh, Romanov was at least already on that set, so that's one less thing to worry about. Uh, oh, and just a quick question. Yes. Andorians haven't heard of Romulans either, right? They have not. Thank you. Uh, if anything, you have even less frame of reference because the the translation uh, <coughs> what it what it links to in terms of an Earth concept uh, or such that there's any sort of similarity or bearing there doesn't um, there isn't an Andorian analog or there's not the historical context. So, let's, uh, I'm looking to see if there's anything that I would accept as, uh, like, debris or wreckage. I'll probably just set you guys in the cargo bay without it, because I'm not seeing anything particularly good. Um, but, to set the scene, um... Some time later, we are in a slightly darkened cargo bay. Uh, there are a few um, officers from the operations department uh, that have laid out and strewn, like uh, strewn about different bits of fragments of hull, of uh, other burned equipment, uh, things that have been brought aboard that have been deemed to be relatively safe in terms of. Uh, radiological uh, composition uh, such that they could do anything about that before bringing it on board I'd be willing to say that even the relatively primitive transporter could probably screen out some of that if you wanted to bring that Absolutely. on board yeah um well okay um we're doing this forensic style so I'm I don't want to kill any evidence, That's so fine. I would set up an area where I could keep the stuff as is. Perhaps and everything... In... Yeah. Sorry about that. What were you saying? I was just going to propose uh, maybe you have a team that you are connected in with a team that is like in the uh, the worker bee shuttles, the small little engineering mm -hmm. shuttles, and is uh, doing some EVA out there with uh, some augmented sensors. So we'll Say there's an NPC out there working on this while you are collecting other material here. Okay, and then the other thing is bagging and tagging everything and making sure that the tricorders that handle that stuff are documented and sealed because we may have to present this as evidence. And I know that Tellurites are pretty decent engineers, right? Well, they do have that reputation. The, the Space Command definitely has a strong engineering core. Then I'm making sure that everything is documenting evidence so that they can't say stuff was tampered with. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Make sure tricorders are in specialized modes and put out something to everybody. Here's the way you handle stuff. And as an additional layer, this is something I know about. I'm treating this like a little bit like an archaeological site. So I can time date things and sequences of events. Hmm. I, and yeah. I know about that. I've worked on a, you know, alien archaeo event that put me unconscious for what? six months something along that line yeah exactly so i am using my skills in that area as well okay well let's let's pick up from there um as the uh, as the ops people are laying out different bits of space junk and debris from the uh destroyed tellerite ships um they're laid out. Uh, people are placing some tags on uh, specific items just to denote like 
time or like time of scan assessments on different things a, a similar process is being like digitally archived outside um but yeah um before i have you do any sort of roles here um would you have any words to exchange amongst yourselves um i'll go over i'm sure she already knows the um the um weapons data um i want to look at this from the perspective of the nuclear leftover data meaning i want to try to identify if the uranium in this wet in these weapons was from earth or was faked being from earth mm. i think that after undergoing that sort of change uh, if it would be possible to discern that it would be very difficult to do so so I... yeah and but i'm setting myself up for that task should i need to be able to do it yeah. if you see what i'm saying yeah uh we'll say perhaps there's something that you could try to discern from the enrichment process yeah, that's what I was figuring. Anything along those lines. I'm laying the groundwork to do that okay. as we're setting everything up. Yeah, because so, good idea. Of... Your final outcome. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Shira, as Romanov is like just busy in her, or, like deep in her work here, um, is there anything in particular you are wanting to engage with here? Shira's probably just musing out loud uh so the terrorites say nuclear weapons were used we've got scans showing nuclear weapons were used human nuclear weapons uh, starfleet and mako are they the only ones who have a uh, who have a supply of nuclear weapons who do i know of who has who, who's on the nuke list on earth um, by and large, only um, only states still retain nuclear weapons, as far as you know. Um, so, yeah, it would be it, it would either be um, something in uh, let's just say this after World War Three and after they did as much as they did um, and once Earth actually started to unify post-first contact, uh, nuclear weapons have something of a deep taboo, even though they're not even the strongest of uh, torpedo-style weapons, and antimatter warhead would be much more... Um, mm -hmm. could be much more lethal. But basically, um, I think at this point, to even have nuclear weapons on your ship, it requires... Uh, uh, Shira, you would have actually come to know that um, if the captain had wanted to do that, there would have had to have been a whole procedure where you, a commanding officer, and uh, like monitoring officers at the places where they have their arsenals located basically go through a whole process to provide you the command authority to use nuclear weapons and detail very specific orders. The protocol was meant basically to make it a very limited situation since it was only at the time these protocols were drawn up it was only considered for like planetary usage um, new orders have been obviously written to allow for space-based usage but the actual rules governing employment of nuclear weapons are very tight based on uh, the earth services protocols it's why the while the captain has managed to extendedly borrow one, she has not used it at all throughout his entire service here. So either someone stole a bunch of these weapons, or these weapons were conveniently lost or deemed scrapped and then were passed on to a, another party. Is, is our warhead still there? Has anyone and, checked? <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Um, we'll check that later. Uh, but 
Sh Shiro just uh, wrap her chin. The other possibility oh, is that uh, it's possible that uranium samples were enriched to look like Earth samples. That's another possibility, too. Yes. I suppose you would still have to have a... Uh, you would have to have some kind of read or a technical uh, technical output of what a uh, earth spec nuclear device looks like but yeah that could that could work as well i suppose um what's worrying is that someone somewhere along the line there must have been a there must have been an informant. Either in the Tellarites, who would have known what rough course their ships were taking, or in Starfleet, who again would know that the Tellarites were coming around this time. That's a distinct possibility. I <clears throat> would say that makes sense. So and that this... might be an angle of pursuit. Right now, what I want to do is make sure we can prove scientifically that we, and engineering-wise, we did not make this attack. If that is true. I don't mm. believe it to be. Well, I don't think Earth made this attack either. It's, I don't, I don't it's, think it's, so either. But, ridi yeah. It's ridiculous and clumsy and it looks exactly like Earth made the attack. If you wanted to, for whatever reason, destroy these uh, free Tellarite ships, Earth don't want to make it look like they did it. So your yeah. defense is it wasn't us because it was clearly us? I kind of like it, actually. Quiet, quiet voice of horn. <laughs> Never. No. So uh, we, but... we left the comp. That, that I don't know where I am. <laughs> Maybe I'm somewhere else. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, no, you were you were asked to go to go 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 help out Romanov. So if you want to join in that scene, go right ahead. Either that, or it's actually Sabral's disembodied voice. Uh, <laughs> no, no, that's even worse. It's even worse. <laughs> Sabral's disembodied. Voice. I, I was making that assumption right off the bat. But yeah, Horn, you you were asked to go help out Romanov and share. Yeah. If Paul uh, wants okay. Just the the momentary terror of Shira having a head Sorol yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> Every <laughs> everyone is a a, Sorol, yeah, a shoulder Sorol now. You know that uh, uh, that um no. that holographic technology that Why? you scavenged. Um. Yeah, I did some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All we need to say is Sorol. He did some stuff. Basically, yeah. Surprisingly versatile. Um, I would even go even further with the League. Um, to have a ship in place with sufficient weaponry to take out a um, slightly overstrength escort, um, that requires quite the planning and timeline. So, yeah, the leak might be higher than it'd be uh, well acceptable, someone, to be honest. Someone fed information to someone, and I think it's it's more likely to be someone on the Earth side of things. Because you've got the Crozier. We didn't exactly tell anyone else where to find that ship, so... Unless someone came upon it by sheer chance, someone else may someone from Earth made that made sure that ship disappeared. I wonder if it'd be a good idea for Starfleet and Mako to have a uh, a full stock take of their nuclear inv inventory. Fleet wide, because if we're missing a ship, what else 
Oh, we miss him. Hmm. You oh, can relay it to the captain for the session. She does have connections. Yep. And as... That's not a happy question. Say, are all the nuclear weapons we own, like, still in storage? <laughs> <laughs> Know how many nuclear weapons we on Earth have lost casually? <laughs> yeah, can you imagine the ones we've lost in two world wars? Two world and in war interstellar wars. travel and colonization and, and stuff? Yeah. There's probably like nukes stored somewhere that no one knows about. Mm -hmm. Like they open a warehouse at some point, it's like, oh, what's this? Oh, dear. It, it is a little worrying. Yeah. <laughs> in any case. Uh... As you ponder those disturbing possibilities, um, Romanov, if you would like that role to see if you could determine anything unique from the um, from the residual uh, information you have about the uh, or like, see if you can discern anything special about how these weapons were enriched or how the uh, constituent uh, fuel for it was. Uh, brought up to weapons grade, then you may do so. I will uh, rule that... Share assist? I will yes. allow. Yep. And <clears throat> I do have so, a special... I have weapons engineering and I have reverse engineering. Which one do you want me to use, Zach? I think that reverse engineering is a little more appropriate in this case. Uh, I would you also... want reason or control? I think actually that reason would be more appropriate for you to uh, run the necessary scans here. Um, Shira, you may assist with reason and security. Uh, I suppose... Can I use a focus on, on this? or What would you have that would apply? I've got shipboard tactical systems, nukes are that, and explosives, and nukes are very explosive. Nukes they are, really are quite explosive. I will give you that focus. Okay, do you want me uh, to spend a momentum, everyone? Well, on? Let, let me first say, uh, the difficulty on this roll I had originally planned before. However, we do still have one... Uh, well, we have two decreased difficulty rolls uh, left to go, so this will be one of them, which will mean the difficulty on this is reduced to three. I'd still like to spend him one momentum on this. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And, uh, let's see, focus, yes, here we go, one momentum, rolling. Oh. And can you ship assist. Oh, one. wow, that's just a complete, wow. Yeah, that is a, that is one success on the roll there. Um, geez, you can seven. use your determination to re-roll those. Uh, yeah, I will use my determination. Every problem has a solution. I'll do a re-roll. Now, is that just on two dice or on all three? Uh, that can be on the entire pool, so you can re-roll as many dice as you want. Uh, Shira, that actually does allow you to re-roll your own as well. Oh, nice. I'll re-roll two of them because I already have a success. Is that right? I just re-roll two? That would work. Okay. <coughs> okay, there's one more. Hey. Hey. Two. Oh, God. All right. It was a uh, struggle to get there, wasn't it? <laughs> yep, yep. It is a... Are you so struggle to get from? I won't even repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Um, <please. laughs> there's, there, there is there is the void of space just on the other side of the this door. I am almost not even role playing anymore. Of having I had a good god. <laughs> okay, so it is some slow initial going, but. With four successes, you do manage to achieve the difficulty 
and exceed it, so you do earn back the momentum that you spent, uh, which, because it hasn't, the counter hasn't changed there, uh, nothing needs to be done. Uh, the analysis that you start running, Romanov, um, I will say that it was, like, just too much to say exactly where the fuel for the reactor came from, at least, like, where it would have been originally mined. You know, after an explosion like this, it is very difficult to discern exactly where the, uh, where the fuel was from beforehand. Um, there was more that could be told to you by the enrichment. Uh, you know, for example, that uh, Kazinti weapons have a uh, much more erratic sensibility to it. Um, there's signs of not just high grades of enrichment, but of a certain instability, other nasty uh, radioactive particles that come into play that honestly probably don't make them all that safe to keep on their own ships in some ways. Um, however, uh, as you go through this, you notice that there are definite similarities um, with Earth tech, or like with um, Earth styles of nuclear weapons enrichment. Um, it's consistent with what any human vessel would make. However, you do start noticing a few quirks with the residual energy fields. Um, or like the, some of the residual energy from the readouts here and from what's in the uh, ships there. Um, there are some quirks that you can't quite explain through the, what you would know um, from, like, the conventional processes or from standard, um, or, like, the standard processes to enrich uh, the nuclear fuel for this and, uh, like, get it to sufficient weapons grade. Certain uh, energy signatures that just don't quite make sense. But then, thinking back to your time working on the shipyards and uh, basically in the uh, like in different points in time where working in the family business where you had taken some unconventional approaches to some of the engineering solutions and had gotten to know um, any sort of uh, like basically getting to know the designs of different uh, earth vessels, it starts to click into place with you that while the techniques might be standard, the equipment is less so. Something beyond the typical um, you know, military grade processing. Then that's what I'm focusing in on then. Because if it's that unusual, something unusual made it. Yeah, and I'd have a feel for that because we probably worked on vessels like that. My family did. Would that be... Do you okay, do you muse am... on do you muse on yeah. uh, the thoughts that you've uh, just been saying aloud? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will say there's a possibility this was enriched on a colonial reactor from Alpha Centauri, but I am not a hundred percent sure on that yet. Does Alpha Centauri have? Uh nuclear reactors capable of producing it's the uh it's the uh, one of the shipyards it, it's a it's a key pivot point for <clears throat> shipping colonial groups uh and fringers <clears throat> and boomers 
so a lot of boomers work out of there so it's a it's a big shipyard the answer would be definitely yes okay doesn't necessarily well it doesn't take the thing finger off the humans as being culpable but No, it does not. Uh, but there was also a lot of political unrest on my... So... But I'll continue doing this. So, continue the process. Okay, so... Deb. Yeah. And you were going to inform the captain? Um... Do I feel I have enough to inform the captain, Zach? That is at least some preliminary info. It's uh, <coughs> up to you how confident you are. And since uh, Commander Horn and Lieutenant Shearer were both there, the decision is partially theirs, too. We'll, we'll send her a preliminary possible report. This, this requires a lot of follow-up. Mm -hmm. I'll put something together in a quick message, prioritize it directly to her. Um, <laughs> I'm going to send a love letter to my wife, uh, Zach. Copy that. About um, how due to an unfortunate... I, I've heard amongst my family there was an unfortunate broken valentine. Um, and that perhaps we should think about having a Christmas party between families. And I'll make a priority because I love my wife, right? I.e. Broken Arrow and might be separate, uh, might be certain, um, people that, uh, <clears throat> we know especially. The message will get relayed along to, uh, right, the message will get relayed along to the, um, to Starfleet Intelligence, but... Will take some. Um, it will take some time before command responds to it. Yep. Well, they have to go look themselves too. I imagine so. Yeah. All right. Well, um, does anybody want to do anything else in the context of the scene here? Mm, I um, would like to start working on like uh, this rough timeline on when the information would have to be leaked initially for all of this to be set up mm. if you know what i mean like getting a ship getting the weapons getting the location like at this all of this must be prepared um so at what point has the all this information most likely leaked and who at that point was privy of this information Gotcha, gotcha. We could definitely work something out with that. And I think I heard somebody else. I, I didn't see it light up, but I was I wanted to check. Did anybody else have something they wanted to uh, do or run real quick? We'll go on from there. Uh, do we actually want to take like a quick five minutes for like a bio break or something of the sort? Sure. All right. Yeah. I think that uh, next on the list was going to be a sensor scan, if I'm not mistaken. Patel, uh, you were left in command on the bridge. I, would you want to directly oversee the scan here, given its importance, or would you feel comfortable uh, you know, just directing Stewart on the matter? I think for as much as Patel is getting more and more comfortable in the command role, he is, I don't want to say he's a micromanager, but I think there are some things that he would prefer to do himself. Fair enough. So, um, we'll say that uh, as we come back to the bridge, there is, uh, well, Patel is presently going between the stations. There might have been a uh, an ensign blue shirt or blue striped shirt uh, looking over uh, that had been monitoring sensors while you were away, but uh, upon receiving confirmation from Crichton that you both have secure communication protocols between the ships, and that 
a final um, consensus on how to best approx or best um, set up the sensor scan you were concerned with, I will say that uh, you are ready to conduct the next series of scans, or perhaps that they are already in progress, and that you were just waiting for some. Uh, you're waiting to collect some final results at this time. Um, it's like a roll to to interpret the the feedback, basically. Yep. So what I am going to say is that uh, Patel, you are going to be confronted with a what would be a difficulty five reason plus science scan. Before that happens, I will say that first the advan uh, since the starship will assist you, uh, the advanced sensor suite is coming into play. Uh, a decrease the difficulty, the last one on the list, is also coming into play. Uh, which means uh, we are, we're in the time loop episode again because we keep getting threes coming up. Uh, but yeah, this is reduced to difficulty three. Um, additionally, you are assisted in your roles, not simply by your own ship, but by the starships Intrepid and Enterprise, whom I will roll for. Ooh. Okay, um, I'm going to drop one momentum, if that's fine with everybody. Cool. Hearing no objection, we're good there. Nope, no, go, go ahead. For it. Momentum, go for it. And that is three successes right off the bat from Mr. Patel. Somebody could get the Aegis. I'll get the Aegis. All right. What is it? Um, sensors that would be and sensors science. plus science. Yes. I moved Crichton. Oh. Poor Crichton. We can. Oh no. Uh, Sorry, that was uh, oh. that was Enterprise there rolling by mistake. Uh, but that is two. Er, that is a fourth success from Enterprise. A third, or rather, a fifth one from the Aegis. Uh, let's see how Intrepid does. And I am sorry that they appear red there. That's just the uh, quirk of the sheets after the last update. Hey, Aegis, re-roll that die. God damn! I just closed the damn thing. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, I was mistaken. Uh, we are currently at four successes with Enterprise assistance. Uh, no. Assisting uh, Aegis is not successful in its role. Um, however, Intrepid will give you one additional support there. And that is a natural 20. Okay. Um, would but you guys... Got... Chips would stop rolling complications. That'd be great. <laughs> would you like the GM uh, to just take some threat on that one? How about you spend some momentum? Yeah. You're, you already have 14, 14 threat. You don't need more. Okay. Well, you did gain back a point of momentum, so you need only drop one point of momentum in order to buy off the there complication. Yep. All right. So with the spread of ships as they are, um, Patel, the sensor arrangement, it, it's not ideal, but it is better than uh, it is better than what you could have hoped for in most situations. Certainly Aegis has it is used to being on its own um, so many times, and its sensors have usually managed to pull things out. Uh, that being said, the supplemental scans do give you some added um, analytical range, um, or they do help you sort through some of what's uh, showing up there. Uh, so initially... Like, as you run this high-powered sensor scan here, um, the initial look of the thing would suggest that um, anything that's in the area appears mostly, like, very old. Nobody is, like, openly running warp er, their warp drive in this region of space. Let's actually move this around because I think whether it's in your viewfinder or on one of the screens here uh, 
results would start displaying on... Oh, not that map. Uh, which one is it? This one here. The handy dandy purpose made one for this. I back this out so that everybody can see. Let's make sure it looks good on stream. Okay. So just slight adjustments here. Okay, so on the display, um, we have the key sites. Um, there is the rendezvous coordinates where the Tellarites were initially meant to meet with the Enterprise, uh, where it is still located. We have readouts from the other Earth ships that are in the area, and Aegis is presently in this zone very roughly, um, near the Tellarite wreckage. Much closer, I'd say, but that's just the imprecision of that. Um, so, as I was saying, there isn't much at first that comes out in terms of, like, signs of an active warp signature or anything. Um, however, you do start, uh, as you start putting to practice some of the work that you've done in the past, particularly to try and find ships that either aren't um, or like are trying to obscure their warp signature in some manner or are otherwise uh, trying to work relatively quietly uh, you get more interesting items from the sensor net um, one of them uh, one signature actually comes up in the vicinity of a star that you have already visited once down in the bottom left corner. Uh, there are some potential particles which would suggest a recent warp uh, had been terminated sometime in perhaps the past couple days around this zone near Beta Canum Venticorum, which you also know as the Chara system. Uh, you had previously visited that planet during, um, I believe it was episode 9, May your woes be your deadliest weapons. Um, you knew that there was an Andorian base roughly in that location, uh, or had been. They had evacuated it and their uh, most dangerous cargo. So that is a recent warp trail. Um, you see that there are signs of another trail over in... Uh, let's see... I'm just trying to get it into the proper layer here. You see that there are signs of a second trail that may or may not be active right now in this zone, um, and it's rough orientation sending it, uh, you'd think, on a course towards... generally, like, a galactic south, maybe south... Um, east location, which a lot opens up in that area. Um, and then um, the last signature you pick up, uh, this one actually comes in from Niagara. It doesn't suggest warp signature of any sort, but it suggests another metallic reading or some sort of low power emission something operating in the vicinity of a system that the Tellarites refer to as Vazza. Um, in roughly this uh, north, uh, well, this northernmost position um, on the map. So, uh, the initial sensor readings as they suggested there isn't much to uh, because of how it degraded whether intentionally or uh, be it through other means and dealing with sensor range as much as you can there isn't so much in the way to tell you exactly who or what these are but these are the unusual readings you're picking up on the map 
Is there anything that says when these, like roughly what time frame we're talking about with these uh, sensor readings? Okay, so the the sensor readout from the first signature over near um, Chara, that would suggest uh, that the warp signature terminated sometime in the past couple of days. Uh, the readout from the, we'll call it the green signature here, uh, that suggests something current, or like more recent within the past few hours. Um, and the signature that Niagara has helped you pick up uh, is also a currently present uh, reading. Mm. And what do we know about the time frame of like when the the crozier would have been here? Like it, it's strange to me that I wouldn't pick up a work signature for them. Oh, uh, let's see. I will I will say that Crozier seems to have uh, or well let me go back and double check my notes on this because this is like, actually is an omission on my part I apologize okay because uh, otherwise my thoughts would have been like we knew that the Crozier was was like basically coasting out of warp or like decelerating at sort of a, a natural speed it seemed like so I'm wondering if somebody just like disengaged the warp engines and had them like coast into where they are now and then blow up or whatever. Yeah, it looks as though a crozier was dropped somewhere along the path, uh, actually not far off of where you might have um, such that you can determine it. There, are the last like signs of the crozier being at warp um, suggests that maybe it was initiated somewhere in this section around here. I'm not actually sure if that's showing up on, and I'm going to do this here. So Crozier might have been let loose uh, in this general area, but it did not travel for warp very long, just enough to essentially get it around this grid of space and that it would have probably been operating on impulse for a time. Uh, the impulse trails do suggest something uh, relatively fresher, like there is an ion trail, but it is much weaker, like the engines such that they have any power to them or had any power to them, they were operating on relatively low settings, it seems. Mm. Yeah, I think my my first instinct or Patel's first instinct, like he, he doesn't he doesn't really know what to make of the readings. He can't interpret them in any specific way. He he perceives them as they are, basically. But there's no thoughts that immediately go through his mind about you know, oh the the green one is something worth investigating, or the blue one or the red one. Nothing here seems super out of the ordinary for like sector wide warp traffic. If anything, it, how minimal uh, the minimal level of activity that there is would have been the uh, would have been the strange thing if you hadn't accounted for the fact that um, you know, Earth had let other powers know ahead of time that there was going to be um, traffic along this route to Babel. And there had been, basically, there had been the request of a, uh, a warp exclusion zone of a sort. Do we have any kind of, like, be it in the form of, like, a travel log or, I don't know, some sort of communications, some kind of an IFF on the green and the red to see who, specifically what these are? Like, I think the red it seems to me is probably a Tellarite formation of some type. The green I'm not so sure about. Uh, the neither one actually seemed to be broadcasting. Um, I'll give this to you as an obtain or a free obtain information spend, um, since I don't think these would have been re evident from these. They do not appear to be broadcasting any sort of uh, like subspace transponder codes. 
there are some unusual readouts from this vessel or some unusual like subspace ripples or it's like something that you, Crichton would tell you seems like damned peculiar from the uh, the broadcast uh, like from the broadcasting perspective or such that a subspace communication would be uh, relayed but he doesn't know quite what to make of it and I think you said that the red is moving out of this area, or is it moving... The red is into... presently not moving at all. It is actually... That's the one area where there isn't a warp signature, per se, but there are signs of a vessel potentially operating on a low power mode. Um, hmm. So I'm wondering, and I'm just going to float an idea out there, I'm wondering for a an obtain information task, if you'll allow me to sort of like abstract that as communicating with the Niagara and finding out if the Niagara can do like a some sort of like a covert sweep of that area since they're the closest ship besides us to get more information about this this low power ship that's just like chilling out there. Hmm. And if I can do that, then I would spend momentum to do it and get more information. Okay. Otherwise, like that, that that's my, my general goal is to, to basically figure out more about what that red dot is on the sensor readouts. Yes, yes. Uh, let's see. So would you, would you want to make... Uh, well, I'm thinking about how best to execute this because... Uh, yeah, I, I'm not trying to think. Me Mechanics-wise, like, you know, I could always have Crichton just call the Niagara and have them do this. But I would like them to do it a in a relatively um, covert way, and b in a way that lets me use my studious trait. Fair <laughs> enough. I'll well, I'll say that you know since you have so some of the questions I just gave you for free there without necessarily tapping the mechanics of that uh, obtained information spend. If you want, we can say that the like the free question that you were able to spend or the free momentum you got to spend on that as the science officer su uh, succeeding at this that gave you like one answer there so we could say studious is still in effect and this could be another free question here um, okay you can you can uh, you can at least uh, you know we can run the little bit of role play with uh, you and Crichton trying to work this out here um, sure yeah um, Mr. Crichton, can you try to raise the Niagara and have them pinpoint with a, a covert active scan this sector here, and he'll like point to his monitor and uh, show show Crichton where he intends to to have them scan for. Hey, sir. I'll coordinate with our own here, and okay. They said that they might, be, uh, they're having some sensor difficulties, but they might at least be able to develop some sort of, uh, they might be able to give us some sense of hull composition or something of the sort. Unfortunately. Excellent. Can you also, can you also have them define the nature of their sensor difficulties? Is it hardware or? Yes, sir. The, uh, the Niagara is one of the new, uh, discovery class scouts. They're apparently having just a few growing pains. Let's see. Yeah, so, with that, uh, sensor data starts playing out uh, between their low power operation and the uh, some like very minor interference coming out from the uh, the nearest star. Um, it takes just a little moment to tease out something in terms of a recognizable hull composition but you are able to work out um, from some residual like background energy signals uh, you are able to recognize signs of uh, a familiar hull composition here oh fascinating Do, do I hear an eyebrow raising? <laughs> yeah, uh, almost, yeah. The, the ironic fascinating, yeah. Um, hmm. 
I don't think we would have any way to confirm that unless, I mean, could we could we do our own sensor sweep of that? You know, we're, we're roughly the same distance, a little bit farther away. Since we did this as a, an obtain information scan, I had this essentially work off of the initial sensor sweep that you ran here. Um, the Aegis is casting a very broad brush right now, so I suppose you could mm. always try to focus your sensors in that area and try to do that. Otherwise, it would with as uh, minimally as they are tapping power right now, uh, a closer investigation might be warranted to know for certain. Patel just muses to himself and to the camera out loud, quietly. Hmm. Why would a Vulcan ship be just sitting there watching everything? Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Never trust them. Saral was right. We should have no Vul nuke Vulcan when we have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't know which, which Vulcans these Vulcans side with. They could be Veloc uh, loyalists. Yeah, Veloc holdouts. Mm -hmm. Out of character, I think if we're going to investigate the uh, Vulcan ship, then perhaps ask Enterprise to do the blue dot and Intrepid to go to the green dot. That's a it's a good one, but I don't know that we have the justification to investigate the red one really. Like we've detected them, but mm. is do, there do anything we need else? Justification to, be... to investigate. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we we have the survivors here from the Tellarite wreckage. There's nothing else ostensibly for us to do here specifically. Isn't this also Earth space? In the loosest sense, mm. or was this literally? Kind of free place. Ground, I think. It, it's it's the outer outer edges of, of Earth space. It's Earth space I mean, with, quite, with quotations around it. I mean, there was an unprovoked attack on Telluride, so we just want to make sure that the Vulcans are okay. You know? Have you seen anything? What's this on the driver's seat? Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Crichton, route to Enterprise and Intrepid uh, that they should, or that we request that they investigate the other two sensor contacts or, or add it to their list of things to investigate, and we will be heading coreward towards the, uh, the red dot here on my screen. Aye, right, sir. I'll, I'll get that. It, uh, I will have that relayed uh, right away. I can also, uh, well, I, I know the captain's on Do Not Disturb. Do you want me to... Do you want me to go in there, or did you want to take that yourself? He thinks for a minute, and 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 just knock he, on the door. <laughs> a look, a look on his face uh, comes across just, like just prepare, maybe... just prepare, prepare a note on the data pad. Open the door briefly, throw it in, and then close it again. But <laughs> from the captain, he looks um, hmm, uncomfortable. We'll say that with the prospect of, of what he's about to say. But then he says, um, Mr. Conley, plot a course for the red sensor dot and engage at warp three. Uh, Aye, sir. I will inform the captain. He's made a decision. Oh, my. Mm -hmm. And that's how we know Patel's really the changeling. <laughs> oh, my so, God. So what's your... <laughs> I knew Romulan. It was conspiracy between freaking uh, Horn and Patel all along. Why me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm two Romulans in a trench coat. I have established that. Um, what's what's Patel's like command phrase for you know make it so engage? Um, he you? Uh, need to work on that. He just says just go. That. <laughs> just go. go. Yeah. <laughs> just wave hand. Just go, please. Yeah. It, <laughs> just yeah. please, please get it over with. Just, just go. <laughs> it, it's it's on to our next assignment. You know, the one that Kirk said, uh, because there isn't the the warp phrase isn't a thing. Ah. Well, we make it one. <laughs> Pain. Out of character, totally agree with you. <laughs> but it's it, in character. It's just go. Just go. And I'll um I'll go awkwardly 
meander my way, Teresa May style, over to the ready room. Yep. Uh, so you give the the button a push in the uh, you give the door chime a push and inside the uh, inside the captain's uh, ready room um, it, captain how are you doing as uh, that alarm play or the chime plays I imagine initially the headache was like at a, at a seven right or yeah. so. Yeah, it's probably down to like a five, mm -hmm. uh, even with pain pills. Um, she just groans. Whoever is pushing that, I swear I will shoot you. Come in. <laughs> the, the door slides open and nobody's standing there. And then Patel just <laughs> poke, poke, pokes his, his head around the corner. Captain, I help you, Ken? Uh, yeah. Um, we have discovered something, Captain, I think, and, and I have um, made a decision to investigate further, but I thought I would apprise you of the, the current status of things. And he hands the pad with the sensor readouts. Yep. As that happens, uh, Captain, you might notice out of the corner of your eye that the ship has just gone to warp. Yeah. She'll just... <sighs> Patel, meanwhile, be, Patel's got this look on his face that he's expecting to be beaten at some point. Like he's very uh, hmm. careful. That, that comes later. <laughs> this isn't the 19th century, nor the Royal Navy. I have no flog to flog you with. Come in, Karen. Sir, this sensor contact was uh, suspicious to me. Um, I've had Enterprise and uh, I forget which I think was Intrepid following up on the other sensor contacts, but this one specifically sticks out to me as something Just that's worthy. Step of in, Kieran. Step in. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, don't, yeah, don't yeah, talk to yeah, me yes, from from the door. Yes, yes, Captain. And uh, he steps in, and the door closes. Darkness. <laughs> Should just flick through it. I've I'm experienced enough to to read a report even with a headache. Um, so I'll just scroll through it. Vulcan, huh? Well, we can certainly make a a wellness check. We don't need to let them know that there's something going on, but certainly that uh, we were already trying to have a bit of uh they're not supposed to be in here if anything in the first place so certainly we can ask be helpful as we usually are as starfleet if nothing else this is earth space and we can extend a welcome to our our new friends our we new old friends we could even throw a few protocols uh, insisting that uh, because they're in Earth space, we need to make sure that they are healthy and their ship is capable, if not, uh, offer repairs. We insist. Uh, anything else? Patel looks um, a little bit... Not concerned, like a, like a mix between concern and relief, and says, um, "So you're you're not mad that I ordered us to go to warp and investigate this without informing you? You're the XO, and you were taking the con. I, Karen, this is part of your job. True, but up until now, I've always sought your guidance before really uh, making the decision myself." And certainly when it comes to more of the big decisions, I think I could agree. But you've already informed me of your justifications for it afterwards. And they seem reasonable and sound, which I expect as such from you. You have my confidence. Fidel. She looks over. Her, she mm -hmm. looks, like, worn out. Um, but she looks... You know, genuine. He uh, he swallows a big gulp dramatically. 
Thank you, Captain. When we're about point two light years, uh, inform me and I'll come to the bridge. Okay, sir. Is there any further information you need? Anything I can do for you? <sighs> There's of concerns I'm having regarding what the reports we have so far. I think the entire it, situation is concerning. The fact that it came from Alpha Centauri, that it was an Earth vessel. It, it was quite literally made in the equivalent of a backyard. Backyard uh, power plant. It's finding myself, it's finding a little bit too close to home, if you get my drift. I'm just hoping that for you, you, myself, and uh, Earth, that it isn't. Because that will certainly be a political hurdle to deal with. Well, if it helps any, I don't think we're alone in, in this mystery. You know, besides just the Aegis, there's four other, three other Earth ships out there, plus the Tellarites, and now these Vulcans whose motives are unclear. Mm. She just rubs her forehead as she's still pretty much in pain. Um, is there anything else, Karen? Mm, no, sir. That's it. All right. Keep doing what you're doing. She smiles. You're doing well. She hands back the pad. Cool. He uh, he takes the pad and he makes for the door, but then he stops for a second and he he looks like he's thinking about something, but it's not something that he he specifically wants to say or anything. He's just standing there for a moment, but then he opens the door. And Karen, it. you're my XO. If you have something to say, say it. Nope, I, I I literally didn't out of character. I didn't have anything. I just wanted to do it for. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But she's she's like knows the pause. Like, mm, no, come on. I yeah. like that Patel just goes, nope, which just continues to leave. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got that eccentric academic thing where he comes to you when he has a complete thought, not when the thought is... Yeah. She's trying to break you of that a little bit, but yeah. Um, you, 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 can, you can tell the gears are turning somewhere and that at some point it'll come out, whatever it is. She just watches the door close and then slowly shakes her head. And... Uh, works on a few other things for the moment. That's it for that scene. All right. And commercial break. Yes, yes. So, uh, Aegis will continue on its course. Um, there, This might be the moment where we have, like, uh, whenever it comes back from break, the camera would go to some sort of interstitial log saying that the ships are on or rather the different ships in the Starfleet contingent are on course to investigate the other various uh, vessels that are out in the zone right now. Um, before we get to this possible Vulcan ship, would anybody want scenes of any sort or uh, any breather moments here? This might be like one of the last things we do for the episode. No, I am good. Okay. I think um, uh, for the rest of you, uh, Romanov, Sh uh, Shira, Horn. Nah, I don't really have anything. Just continuing the investigation, making sure things are tight when they get to Horn so he can lock all this stuff up at the investigation. All right. Maybe at some point the captain will just find a message, um, just like for for migraine relief, I recommend darkness and Bach. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say Gok? Bach. No, Bach. Gok. Uh, yeah. Gok or not? Gok, Gok might distract you enough to not think about your migraine, but that's the <laughs> approach. Pretty yes. much. Uh, so, 
Uh, yeah, I suppose some time will elapse and um, Aegis will uh, proceed along its course then. Uh, eventually, um, yeah, Patel, you will, uh, or, like, back on the bridge, you will see that, you, uh, like, Connolly lets you know you are coming up close on the uh, Vulcan ship, so if you would, uh, I presume that you would call senior officers back up to uh, stations? Yes. Yeah. And hopefully the captain is feeling better by then. Yeah. How am I feeling after a while? Is it, has the headache gone it's, away or is it just maintained? I'd say that it, we're probably talking closer to a three now. Um, All right. some distance. Um, but yeah. Uh, you managed to get back on the screen. Uh, the, yeah. the combination of uh, self-medicating that you've uh, undergone has things relatively stable, and you are on final approach here. Now, uh, Crichton, if you can please set the ship to condition yellow. Hey, sir. Uh, all hands, uh, er, all hands, step up to condition yellow. We changed the light bulbs earlier, sir, so there shouldn't be any problem there. I do appreciate it. Nice touch. Conley, if you can bring us uh, a friendly 10,000 uh, kilometers. Hey, sir. Wait, no, I'm not the helm officer. Yeah, I'm the helm officer. What, what are you talking about, Craig? <laughs> right? I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so yeah, a few moments, uh, there will be a flash ahead of you, at, or we would cut to an exterior space shot, and a flash of blue as Aegis uh, comes out of warp and drops out ahead. We follow it as the camera pans around, um, or it passes as Aegis goes by, and uh, we circle around behind it to see it approaching steadily on impulse. At, uh, towards a Dakir class cruiser out in the distance. Uh, Connell, uh, back on the bridge, Connell will say, uh, approaching to 10,000 kilometers, sir. Mr. Uh, uh, well, uh, Captain, uh, we are being hailed by the Vulcans. Oh, wow. I'm glad they're at least uh, willing to communicate. Bring the hell up. On screen. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, um, on the forward screen ahead of you, a Vulcan male uh, appears on the uh, on the view screen. The bridge in the background. Um, lit modestly, uh, very dull, the, a lot of grays and beiges in the background. Um, and uh, he begin, uh, as you, uh, the moment he comes on the screen, he will give you a very measured greeting. This is kept, uh, this is a commander to call of the Zirtan, the uh, Vulcan Science Academy vessel Zirtan. Captain I very much wish that you had announced your uh, provided an advanced announcement of your presence before you closed in. You have jeopardized uh, what has been weeks worth of uh, some space mapping work. I do apologize. I am uh, Captain Lillian Sharp of the Starfleet Aegis. Um, certainly, if we had known that the Vulcan Science Academy was working a uh, cartography here uh, we would have been a lot more uh, careful and uh, light with our footsteps though I had been informed by uh, high command that there were already established communications with various Vulcan ships about about the restriction upon this space at the current moment uh, we presently have uh not been exercising long-range communications uh, due to the delicate nature of our sensor equipment. Uh, that is also why we have powered down our warp engines for the time being. 
We are attempting to conduct in-depth mapping exercises after the use of the... Well, after the subspace disruption incident. I can understand. Uh, it's quite finite work, she says. Uh, as she's talking, she will type a text communication to Patel... Um, Patel and Romanov uh, verify the ship and their conduct at the current moment. Um, Chair is very closely monitoring the state of their weapons. Yeah. I will... If if you don't mind, um, given the the bit of tension that is going on within the Alpha Quadrant itself, much less the sector, um, please offer our... uh, open hand to help out in any way you can, any way we can, as certainly you are within Earth space, and we like to be as generous as possible to any guests. Mm. I hope you don't mind, given the nature of uh, tension going on, that we may have to do a few scans. Hopefully it won't ruin too much, if need be. If you feel the need to conduct policing or investigatory measures, then we would ask that you minimize the power on your sensors uh, to a low level. Uh, The instrumentation that we are using for our subspace mapping is somewhat delicate. If it would be more to your preference, Captain Sharp, we could allow you to come alongside, and uh, you are welcome to bring a small inspection team on board have a science officer we may be willing to share some information with them likewise uh, we can verify uh, we can verify to you that we are not currently equipped for a tactical loadout indeed uh, even a very basic sensor scan would show that we presently uh, are not loaded with photonic ordnance and that our Defensive systems may uh, remain powered down. I understand. Please give us one moment. And she'll just uh, look to Crichton to pause the screen for a moment. Well, he will pause the screen and he will mute the audio because that's. Uh, yeah. he'll, he'll get the kill signal. Yeah. All right. We're already... Um, the fact that they talked to us in, at all uh, dissuades in the initial cur- uh, concerns, but let's see what we can without uh, causing any ill repute. Mr. Horn, if you, since you seem to have your hands available, perhaps you can look within the Vulcan database to see um, the... see if the... Uh, identification matches up with the location and their uh, current uh, business. Already on it. Patel, if you can do a very delicate scan, though if need be, I'm sure I can excuse uh, a few things here and there. Um, Yeah, then I guess I would just try to verify if what they said is correct about the the nature of the scans that they're running. Okay. Yeah, she, uh, Romanov, make sure that the p- uh, power sensors, everything lines up with the classification of the ship itself. Shira, if it so much as blinks, she says. Yes, sir. Oh, you see on the Got sc- it. you see on the screen the Vulcan officer blinks. He is obviously <laughs> muted. Fire all weapons! Fire all weapons! <laughs> You could yes. pretend to be less eager about it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I uh, haven't got to shoot one Vulcan this entire series so far, and I've had to shoot two Andorians. This isn't right. <laughs> you know, if you wanted to shoot Soral, I would have understood. <laughs> <laughs> Can I shoot you just a little bit? <laughs> just one stun, one stun, that's all. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so let's uh, see. Going going in that order there, um, uh, Commander Horn. For your part, I will say that there 
Like, obviously the Vulcans have done a lot less real-time information sharing since um, they, both since they suspended joint operations after Pajem, um, and particularly once the war started, information got even tighter about Vulcan uh, force deployment and all that. Um, but I, uh, well, let's see. Would you like to roll for anything just as a um, chance to maybe generate some momentum, or would you prefer to uh, um, just like have this as part of what you are? I'm happy to with? make a roll. He asked carefully, depending on what the roll is. Not I'm happy to roll, um, but I don't know how much info, how deep we even can look into this. But just like make sure all the information that is on file available to us matches with what we are seeing and there are no discrepancies okay. or, or other shenanigans. I'll give you an insight and um, an insight and command roll, let's say. And I'll only make it a difficulty one. You won't get much information from that, but um, you have the option. Uh, likewise, um, Drone, if you want uh, Patel may roll a difficulty one reason plus science roll to at least discern the nature of the, uh, like, make sure that they are what they say they are with a low power scan. I'm willing to just give that to you if you uh, don't want to roll. It's up to you there. Uh, we could use the momentum. All right. So, um, you can also have the ship help you there with sensors plus science. Um, uh, yep, I got that. Yep. While you're doing that, um, Horn, you are going to recognize that uh, while Aegis doesn't have a lot, um, or Starfleet doesn't have a lot in the database on that, um, near as you can tell, the Vulcan, uh, there is a Vulcan Science Academy ship known as the Zirtan. Um, it is a Dekir class vessel that's been well classified. A, a surveyor has probably encountered it in the past, so it's verifiable that it is. Like, they have credentials in order. You maybe don't know much about Captain Tikal, but uh, you at least know... Uh, it's enough to say that, um, you know, that everything checks out as far as you are concerned. Uh, likewise, Patel, with three successes on your roll there, and invoking a very gentle scan there, uh, you find that so far as everything he has said it appears to be true there does seem to be some sort of a subspace scan in progress or there are some very interesting sensors which appear to be powered at the moment uh, what does not seem to be at a high power level it seems as though the um, the warp reactor is at a very low power mode the warp ring nacelle is scarcely active, a little more so than is needed for power generation. Uh, they do not appear to have any torpedoes on board, and their uh, particle weapons and shields remain uh, de uh, deactivated right now. They're just on a simple, like, run with thrusters in this uh, in this area. So wow, scarcely the might be telling the truth. Hmm. Uh, I will say, Patel, uh, well, first, as far as the group goes, that would be four points of momentum that are netted between yeah. both tasks. Uh, sensors like those, mapping subspace, would be very, very precise if there's really something to it. They, yeah, I, I, I like uh, Drone's point in, the, in chat yeah. there. I think I think I would I would make that in character and say after I've done my my scan of my scan of their scans basically, um, turn to the captain and say, uh, assuming we're still muted, um, captain. It seems like their claims are true. The ship is rigged for for what I can tell a an intense and deep subspace survey. Um, might also offer that they could have seen things that we wouldn't have been able to given how their sensors are calibrated. They may have some information if we if we ask them nicely. Not a bad idea. <sighs> she straightens herself out a little bit 
and uh, nods to Creighton. Uh, Creighton will reopen the channel. Captain, I do apologize for this uh, brief interruption. Um, I hope you understand, given uh, the unfortunate times that there have been, that one must always be cautious. Um, as compensation for the uh, unfortunate work that has happened already, perhaps you would like some uh, our own scans for some other things that I'm sure you would be more than intrigued by, and the Academy itself. I'm not entirely certain what sensor data of merit would come from a vessel such as yours, Captain. Uh, if you wish to supply it, I have very limited staff on hand right now uh, to analyze this, but... I suppose if you want to relay the transmission, then we will accept that. And if you have nothing else from there, um, I would ask that you proceed to a distance of 400,000 kilometers before engaging warp drive again. And then if you can limit it to warp 1.5 for at least the next oh, two tenths of a light year, then that should minimize the disruption to our sensor telemetry. We can certainly do the best of, of that, though there is a certain situation that perhaps uh, your own ship can provide quite the wisdom for, if perhaps you'd be willing to help out for uh, a concern that would certainly appeal to uh, Vulcan High Command for your service. I can't speak much to the High Command, Captain. Uh, as I understand it, Administrator T'Pau has uh, given orders to effectively dissolve the organization. My only concern is right. with the Science Academy's d uh, directives. Then first, I am certain the Science Academy would also uh, approve of such a nature. Um, there is a concern rela related to uh, a ship that uh, we are currently trying to investigate, and due to its travel amongst uh, local space uh, in the last few days, well, while certainly this ship in of itself has quite the capable sensors, it is nothing compared to the sensor suite that you have. Perhaps if you can impart some of the data that you have, it might be quite uh, helpful in our investigation. The Vulcan pauses for a moment, uh, just the briefest of moments. Uh, you might notice a very subtle shift of uh, the left eyebrow being slightly higher than the right, it coming down, right. and the right one taking its place. Uh, again, but, like we're talking barely perceptible, like millimeters of movement. Um, right. It's basically that was, that was a very <laughs> serious Vulcan reaction there. Yeah, yeah. she'll just say, no. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. Sh I didn't mean to sh she's, she's too busy. She doesn't know this, but the little Romanoff on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah. that's an angle. I, I didn't mean to shock you, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> I. The Captain will say, There's nothing at all. It is clear that you require some sort of assistance on our part, and as delicate as the work is, I suppose that if you requ uh, if it seems as though you are not uh, likely to leave without it, so we will supply you what you need. Prepare a team to come aboard, and we will uh, uh, we will converse on the matter more uh, presently. Thank you, Captain. We will try to minimize our time as best as possible, so you may return to your work. Zirton out. And the Vulcan captain disappears uh, from the screen. A captain, 110%. At the beginning, when the captain is going off like a ship of, of your kind, it's like you, you heard from Horn, like a diplomatic deep breath. <laughs> there are <laughs> things I want to say and express, but instead I'm taking a whole lot of oxygen and process what's happening. <laughs> She'll just look over. Yes, Mr. Horn? Oh, nothing. Mm. I have nothing to say in my capacity as a diplomat. All right. 
Patel, if you can, um, or Connolly, if you can get us, bring us uh, alongside the Vulcan ship. Patel, you have the. Um, Ashley, no. Um, Romanov, you have the con. Uh, Patel, Horn. She like gestures to the ready room, because I'm certainly curious what the hell Horn has to say. <laughs> All right. Connolly will begin conducting uh, maneuvers to bring Aegis alongside and uh, lock into the docking port. So when we step in the ready room, Horn, what would you like to say? Um, not much, really. Just people who are convinced of their own superiority are dangerous in their own way. And annoying to deal with. You are both a diplomat and uh, attaché, as it were. I am sure you know that it's all over the place, even back home. Oh, yes, absolutely. Doesn't mean I have to stand for it. <laughs> I mean, I do have to stand for it, you know. But, you well, know what I mean. I'm glad you volunteered as, a, as our diplomatic, our lead diplomat on the ship. I am sure... Uh, you can impart a few good words with the captain while we take the uh, survey records. Well, how distracted do you want the captain to be? Just garner whatever information you can, whether the time here or where they've been. I want to make sure that we have, um, that we are crystal, that they are who they say they are. Yeah... There's not much information available, which I would not expect to be, but it's also ideal for someone to just hide. Mm, she nods. Patel, if you can uh, talk with Romanov and verify that the uh, the sense of information, while useful, isn't just given to handed over to us in a nice silver platter, as were. Well. I can work with commanders to verify it's it's um, in the integrity of the data. Sure. So we'll while useful, I'm on. all useful. I'm not trusting anything out here right now, especially after the six months that we've had. She says, looking at, looking a bit exhausted at Patel. Like we, we, you and I have been through a lot, and already in the next mess. Yeah, like recalling the conversation we had right when I arrived. She just side eyes. This isn't my fault. <laughs> All right. See to it's done. All right. With that, um, I think that that uh, as you begin seeing to your tasks and trying to determine what the Vulcans may have learned, what they may know. I think that this will be the place where, as Aegis begins to come alongside and prepares to lock in with the uh, Vulcan cruiser they have discovered, that is where we will go ahead and cut off today's session. So, for all of the uh, for, for all of you that have joined us today in the archive, uh, thank you so much for stopping in. Uh, we will be back next week. If you ever want to catch us live, we will be on 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and back to our usual 6 p.m. Uh, Greenwich Mean Time uh, broadcast. Daylight Savings Time is uh, struck th uh, today, so we had some players going at a special time. Uh, but we hope you'll join us either way. Uh, so see you folks around.